I'm not gonna make it. Does your aim suck? Are you really bad? Well, maybe your aim is decent, but you have areas that you need to work on. In fact, you might already be pretty good, but the bottom line is you want to get even better and that's probably why you're here. So let's begin. What's up everybody, my name is Lethal, and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can drastically improve your mouse aim. Whether you're a beginner, or even if you've been at it for a while, there's some things you need to know about aiming in general. In this guide, I'm going to be short and to the point and put things as simply as possible. Before we get into anything, you need to make sure that Windows Mouse Acceleration is disabled. Windows Mouse Acceleration, also known as Pointer Precision, was originally intended to help you feel more in control of your cursor, however it's actually terrible for your aim. In Windows 10 and 11, you can disable it by pressing the Windows key and typing in mouse. Mouse settings should pop up. Click on it, then go to additional mouse settings. Under the pointer options tab, uncheck pointer precision, hit apply and OK. The next thing you need to do is download a good aim trainer. This might seem like a hassle, but I assure you it's not. It's actually for your own good. Proper aim training will help you to sharpen your skills and actually get better faster than just playing games and without the frustration of dying over and over or constantly going back to the lobby. Two popular aim trainers are Kovacs and AimLab. You can find them both in the Steam store. Kovacs is currently $12.99 US, but if you don't want to shell out any money, AimLab is completely free. If you don't have Steam, I'll leave a download link in the description. When you get one of these aim trainers, make sure to use the same sensitivity that you have in game. You can do this in Kovacs by hitting escape to open the menu, Click Settings, then under the Main tab, select the Sensitivity Scale for the game that you play and the FOV. In AimLab, go to the Training tab, and at the bottom of the page, click on Settings, then go to Controls. Here you can select the game, sensitivity, and the FOV that you play on. So let's talk about three aim types. It should come as no surprise that virtually all aim is going to fall into just three categories. It's perfectly normal to be really good in one area, but lack experience in another. It could just be that the games you play don't really force you to use certain skills, and maybe you just haven't learned about them yet. Whatever the case is, I'm going to break down each category to tell you what you should know. Number 1. Flicking One problem that most new mouse and key players have in common is that they take forever to aim. This can be a hard habit to break. Flicking or flick aim is very quickly moving your crosshair in a straight line and placing it onto your target. It is simple target acquisition. It can pretty much determine the outcome of a fight early on. Makes sense, often the player that starts hitting shots first has an advantage. In Kovacs you can find good flicking scenarios by selecting Sandbox, then searching under Online Scenarios. Exercises that will train your flicking ability are Tile Frenzy, Wall Targets TE, and Tiny Wall Targets TE. In AimLab, under the Training tab at the top, go to the bottom left and click on Flicking. FSA Reflex Shot, Spider Shot, and Micro Shot are good flicking exercises, and you can also use Grid Shot Ultimate. Another type of flick is Rebound Flicking. Rebound Flicking is snapping to a target, firing, and then disengaging from that target or moving your crosshairs back to their original position. To do a proper rebound flick, first place your crosshairs off to the side of a target. Flick to the target and click, and then immediately return your crosshairs to their starting point. This is a slightly more advanced technique. The good news is that it's fairly straightforward to practice. Kovacs clearly shines here because it has a specific mode dedicated solely to rebound flicks. You can find it by clicking on Trainer in the main menu and going to the Flicking tab. In this flicking course, your crosshair will start at a central point. When targets appear one at a time, your task is to quickly flick to each dummy, then return your crosshairs to the middle in order to make the next target appear. This ensures that you're doing a proper rebound flick each time. If you are aiming too slow, the targets will start disappearing before you can shoot. After each round, the scenario will adapt. For instance, if you miss a lot of targets to the left, it will start giving you more targets on the left in the next attempt. The downside of Aim Lab is that it doesn't have a designated scenario for rebound flicking. There are a couple of ways to solve this. The first is by using the burst flick scenario. In this scenario, a target will always appear in the center after each target that appears to the side. If you flick fast enough, it's just like a rebound flick, except with an extra click at the end. Alternatively, you can select a course like Grid Shot and plant your crosshair off to one side, above or even below the targets. Then quickly flick to a target from that position and shoot. After each flick shot, simply reset your crosshair to a starting position, and boom, you're practicing rebound flicks. 
Now successful rebound flicks are going to depend on accuracy and click timing, so really try and time your click at the right spot. Try not to click too early or too late. Also make sure that you're placing your crosshair right on top of the target at the end of your flick, not in the middle. This will give you the best chance of hitting your shots. Number 2. Tracking Good tracking requires two things. One, that you first flick to your target, and two, that you keep your crosshair over your target while it moves. The best tracking is smooth tracking. You need to be able to track slow, medium, and fast targets smoothly. But you also need to be able to track targets that change direction constantly. A smart opponent will try to throw off your aim with their movement. It's important to practice for this when you aim train. In Kovacs, you can go to the trainer and click on the tracking tab. There are several exercises you can select from, each with a slightly different implementation of tracking. After completing each level, you will receive a rank starting from bronze all the way up to diamond depending on how well you perform. For more advanced exercises, you can go to the sandbox mode and search tracking under the online scenarios tab. Here you will find a lot of specialized scenarios, some with more random movement. Some useful picks are Angelic Air for Voltaic, Ascended Tracking 90 Smooth, and Smooth Thin Tracking. You can always browse around to see what you really like. In AimLab, under the Training tab, you can go down to the bottom left and select Tracking. Some comparable scenarios are Horizontal Smoothness, Smooth Pill Voltaic, and Pill Track Voltaic. You can browse around until you find the scenario that's good for you. Now in Tracking, it's important to keep your eyes on your target. This might sound overly simple, but it's easy to just blankly stare at your crosshair and hope that you're hitting your shots. Actively focusing on the target requires a certain level of concentration. You can achieve this by paying close attention to a certain part of the target, such as the very center, or in games, the head of your opponent. This very subtle distinction can make all the difference, and it will allow you to aim with intent and hit more of your shots. Number 3. Prediction Prediction falls into two basic forms, first being pre-aim. Pre-aim is any time you aim at a spot where a target might be in the future. For example, if an enemy is hiding behind cover, you can pre-aim at the spot you think they will peek from to prepare the shot ahead of time. In some scenarios, you might even shoot next to cover to prevent an enemy from wanting to peek. Although technically that is called suppressive fire, but it still utilizes pre-aim. Also, when moving around the map, you want to keep your crosshairs aimed at about the same height that the enemy would normally be, preferably head height for easy headshots. Pre-aiming in this fashion will save you the extra step of having to adjust your aim when you eventually see an enemy. By keeping you alert and ready to shoot, pre-aiming is the best way to stay prepared for a fight and possibly win more engagement. The next form of prediction is leading your shot. Leading your shot is when you aim and shoot slightly ahead of a moving target to account for the speed of projectiles. Projectile rounds have in-game physics such as travel time and bullet drop over long distances. Projectiles, however, are not limited to just bullets. Things like grenades, throwable knives and axes, and arrows from bows are all projectiles. The travel time and drop over distance can vary with each one. You can Google the game you play to find out if the weapons in it are projectile or hit scan, although it's pretty easy to tell on your own. Hit scan means that when you click, the damage is registered pretty much instantly, assuming you're on target. Hitscan has no travel time or bullet drop over long distances, so there's no need to ever lead your shots. If your game does use projectiles, you may not notice it much in close quarters with weapons that fire bullets, as the difference will be very slight. But as you get to longer ranges, you will need to start aiming ahead of your moving targets, especially with snipers. Now in Kovacs, if you go into the Online Scenarios tab and type projectiles, you'll actually find some pretty decent exercises. There is Cata Orb Long Strafes. Cata Orb Fast Strafes, and Cata Orb Long Strafes Invincible. If you want a ridiculous challenge, go to Cata Orb Fast Strafes TS2. In these modes, you can see the projectile and hear when it hits. The targets also change direction very often, making it difficult to land easy shots. In Aim Lab, there is Strafe Shot, Circle Shot, and Blink Shot. But before you press play, click on Edit Loadout. Here you can change the weapon to a projectile weapon, which is the bio dart rifle. There is a sweet spot that you should aim at in order to hit the targets, and it's pretty easy to find once you get started. After just a little while, you should be pretty comfortable leading your shots. Now the projectile behavior in these aim trainers isn't going to be exactly the same as in games. For example, there is no bullet drop in Kovacs or Aim Lab, 
However, they can give you a fair amount of practice with bullet travel time, which you can then translate into actual matches. Somewhat anyway. It's not perfect, but it's a good place to start. The next thing you can do, obviously, is to try and pick up sniper weapons in games as often as possible. This will give you the most accurate experience, the only downside being that you will have more pressure on you when fighting enemy players. When leading your shot, you need to predict enemy movement. It's good to catch them moving in one direction for a few seconds. If they're moving too randomly, you might want to hold your fire. Also note that once you miss, they're either going to start dodging or take cover, so try and make the first shots count. Overall, it's not one single technique that's going to make the most difference, but a combination of them all. There is a time and a place for each aim type, and when the situation calls for it, you need to be able to execute correctly. For the best results, practice for at least 30 minutes before gaming every day that you play. If you do this consistently, you will definitely start to see results. Happy training! So that's going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you. In case you need the specific aim courses I mentioned, I have them listed all down in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please let me know down in the comment section or you can DM me on any of my socials. Please leave a like if you got anything good from this upload and definitely subscribe for more content like this. Have an amazing day and we'll see you next time.